Welcome to the Fun Facts of Mythology channel. Indisputably, one of the most remarkable stories in Holy Scripture is the account of the angel who exterminated 185,000 soldiers in a single day. This biblical account illustrates how enemies can challenge mankind, but it also reveals that with faith and trust in Almighty God, no enemy can prevail. If you watch this video all the way until the end, you will find out more about this fascinating story of faith. But first, please click the like button, like and share this video, and subscribe to the channel. Remember to turn on the notifications button to receive updates about other interesting videos like this one. The Holy Bible is filled with historical accounts dating back many years. These events lead us to reflect on the role of God in relation to humanity. Among these stories, we find an intriguing narrative of faith in the face of a great challenge imposed by enemies. In an amazing account, the Bible describes a story that took place over 700 years before Christ. In this story, we meet Hezekiah, a faithful and God-fearing king who was one of the most notable monarchs of the kingdom of Judah, ruling for 29 years. At a certain point, Hezekiah fell seriously ill and received a visit from the prophet Isaiah, who said to him, Thus says the Lord, Put your house in order, for you will die, you will not recover. Many people think that Hezekiah should get his house in order because he was doing something wrong. However, the expression, put your house in order, means to prepare the way for your successor, to make everything ready for the one who will reign in his place. When Hezekiah heard these words, he was deeply saddened, turned his face to the wall and wept a lot, asking God for more time to live. The prophet Isaiah, who was already near the city gate, returned by God's command to Hezekiah and told him that the Lord would give him another fifteen years of life. Furthermore, the Lord gave him a sign, causing the shadow of the sundial built by King Ahaz to move back ten degrees. According to history, Hezekiah succeeded his father, King Ahaz, on the throne of Judah. As soon as he took office, Hezekiah undertook a reform in the kingdom. Judah had established an alliance with the Assyrian nation and allowed the influence of pagan religion in its religious life, in defiance of the divine will. To deal with this situation, Hezekiah worked hard to eradicate idolatry in Israel. He restored the temple in Jerusalem, reopening and purifying it to promote the true worship of the Lord. Ezekiel became known for leading a great engineering work that guaranteed the city's water supply, culminating in the creation of the famous Siloam tank, which years later would become an important place for many Christians. In fact, in this place the miracle of the healing of a man born blind by Jesus Christ was recorded. Although Hezekiah was a faithful servant of the Lord, restoring worship to the true God, he faced difficulties due to the invasion of the Assyrians in Judah, led by King Sennacherib. As a result, the entire Israeli nation was under siege. The Assyrians were one of the most feared peoples in the Middle East. They were famous for their cruelty in the way they treated their enemies and left a trail of destruction in their wake. Its large fortified army and numerous soldiers were responsible for the conquest of many nations, cities and fortresses, which demonstrates the military power of this nation that, unfortunately, left a trail of blood and destruction. The Assyrians were driven by the thirst for domination and power. As a result, King Sennacherib had already conquered Lachish, the second most important city in Palestine. According to historical accounts, the king led his army while plundering several nations to maintain the luxury and grandeur of his capital, Nineveh. Unfortunately, Israel was suffering at the hands of this cruel, pagan nation, and some 46 cities in Judah had already been conquered by the Assyrians. Their next step was the taking and destruction of Jerusalem. Hezekiah felt extremely threatened by this attempted invasion. He even tried to convince Sennacherib to give up attacking Jerusalem, offering a very large sum of money. To pay tribute to the king of Assyria, Hezekiah used the temple and palace treasures in Jerusalem. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 18, reports these events. Hezekiah king of Judah sent this message to the king of Assyria at Lachish. 
I made a mistake. Stop attacking me, and I'll pay whatever we demand. The king of Assyria charged Hezekiah king of Judah ten and a half tons of silver and one ton and fifty kilos of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the temple and in the treasury of the royal palace. At that time, Hezekiah king of Judah removed the gold with which he had overlaid the doors and the posts of the temple of the Lord, and gave it to the king of Assyria. According to the story, King Sennacherib sent ambassadors to Jerusalem with a defiant message. Thus says Sennacherib king of Assyria, on what do you trust to remain besieged in Jerusalem? Is your king Hezekiah deceiving you by saying that your God will deliver you out of the hand of the king of Assyria, so that you will die of hunger and thirst? Hezekiah commanded you to worship one God, so why don't you surrender now? Your God cannot deliver you from the hand of Assyria. Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my forefathers deliver you? Where is the king? Of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Sepharvaim, Hena and Iva? The Assyrian soldiers, who carried the message, further insulted the people of Jerusalem, who were on top of the wall and spoke loudly in the Jewish language, in order to terrify them even more so that they would hand over the city. Then they left, comparing the God of Israel to other clay gods created by human hand. It was a fact that Israel was on the verge of destruction by its enemies, since the war power of the Assyrians was much stronger than the nation of the Lord. The story tells that King Hezekiah, upon learning of all the affront of his enemies, dressed in sackcloth and humbled himself before the God of Israel, exposing his fragility before the Almighty God. Therefore, Hezekiah sent messengers to the prophet Isaiah reporting everything that had happened and asking him to pray to God interceding for his situation. However, Hezekiah also went to the temple of the Lord, placing King Sennacherib's letters of affront on the altar and begged for divine help. Soon after, God answered Hezekiah's prayers through the prophet Isaiah, stating that he had heard his prayers therefore, thus says the Lord. Concerning the king of Assyria he will not enter this city, nor will an arrow be shot the way he came. This one will come back. I, the Lord, will defend this city and save it for my own sake and for the sake of David my servant. According to the narrative, the Assyrian army had planned to attack Jerusalem in the morning and camp around the city with its weapons and soldiers. They were confident that victory was certain and that they would decimate Jerusalem the next day. However, they did not expect that the God of Israel could defend them. The night before the attack, God sent a single angel to intercede on behalf of the Israelite nation, which killed about 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in Sennacherib's camp. At dawn, the Israelites were faced with a desolate scene, corpses of Assyrian soldiers everywhere. The angel of the Lord had fought and decimated Sennacherib's army, which had fled the camp and returned to Nineveh. This story demonstrates the importance of trusting in God, the only true God. And if you want to know more about angels, I'll leave here on the final card a video about the classes of the Lord's angels, and also a playlist with all the videos related to the angels of God. I would like to know your opinion on this matter. Leave your comment below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, subscribe now and activate the notification bell to receive the next videos. See you soon.